Welcome to Pride and Parsippany. I'm your host, Mayor James Barbario. My guest today is Dr. Leroy Seitz, uh, superintendent of our public school system here in Parsippany. Dr. Seitz, welcome to the show. Nice to be here, Mayor. Good to see well, you again. Well, before I ask you some questions, and I have to say this, ladies and gentlemen, I've been mayor seven years, and I've dealt with uh, several, several superintendents in, in my seven years. And um, I tell you right now, I'm so happy to have you back in Parsippany. Well, thank you. You're... Um, <laughs> You're always easy to work with, to, to talk with, and um, I have to tell you, that's important in the school district, especially here in Parsippany, being the largest town in Morris County. But um, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta tell you, and when, when Dr. Seitz came back, we got a lot of wonderful things done between the township and the school board, which we'll probably elaborate on later on, but uh, Dr. Seitz, um, I'm, I'm very happy you're back. Well, thank you, I'm very honored to be here. This is a uh, wonderful community. I enjoyed my first term here and I'm enjoying this one even more because it's kind of special. I didn't anticipate it. It's like that child you didn't expect. Right. It's a surprise, but you find it to be uh, just a wonderful experience and that's what I'm finding here. And of course, working with you and the police department and the council, uh, we have been able to get a lot of great things done and anticipate over the next year or so we'll get some more things done. Absolutely. And that's, you do that by communicating and that's, yep. and that's why ladies and gentlemen, it's important. But um, I know Last year was a little bit different, opening the school uh, year. But this year, how's um, the opening of this, this new school year going so far? Well, the opening went uh, very smooth. Uh, I can say with the exception of a few late buses, everything worked perfectly. And because we had the problem last year, we made a point of getting the schedules done early. So this year, all the schedules for the secondary students were done by July 1st. So we knew on July 1st, who was in what class, what teachers we needed, and as a result, everything opened up very smoothly. Uh, we have a new bus vendor, and even though we have a new vendor and it's a big job, that ran very smoothly, and as of today, uh, we're adding a bus run to uh, one school just to get the kids there a little earlier, and other than that, we're just rolling along. Good. Now, ladies, as you know, and, and I'm gonna ask you because, there's a lot of state, man state mandates that schools have to comply with. How does it affect the, our participant school district? Well, it, it has a direct impact on what we do. Um, we have certain curricula we must have. We have to revise that curricula every five years. Uh, there are certain uh, minimum uh, minutes of classes that we must have. Uh, so it really does affect the district to a great deal. Uh, the one thing that I think is important is to recognize that while we do feel somewhat restricted by mandates and we may complain once in a while about mandates, there are some actually good mandates out there. And um, I happen to think uh, any standards uh, are good. And while some people may not like the park standards or the common core standards which the park tests, they are good standards. And though they you know, came from the federal level and are pushed down to the states, uh, that's a mandate, but it's a good mandate. It will prepare our kids for the future, for college or career. So some mandates are better than others. Uh, the mandates that uh, reflect ensuring the safety and welfare of our kids are certainly welcomed because that's not an area that I've been trained in. And we can hopefully talk later about the agreement we have with you and the uh, township regarding the uh, uh, security of our schools. But there's a mandate that uh, is a good one. You know, we have to have certain safety drills every month and a fire drill every month. So there are good mandates, some that we're not too thrilled about, but overall we deal with them, but it does cost money. Now, let's get about the park. Now, uh, families, are they allowed to opt out of it? No, no one has ever been allowed to opt out of a state testing program, including right. park. I think because of the rush to implement park and because it came from the federal government, there were some people who were upset about that and decided not to take the park uh, the first year. Uh, that was understandable. The second year, which was this past spring, uh, we had a much higher participation rate. Uh, people are beginning to understand the value of the uh, park exam. And most importantly, and we will be advertising this heavily over the next few years, with the graduating class of 2021, passing park will be a requirement for graduation. So uh, we would encourage students to you know, take those tests, do their best, because it helps us understand what we're doing well and where we can improve. It also helps the student and 
his or her parents understand where they have gaps where they need to work harder. So a park is going to be an integral part of what we do. I think in the long run it's going to be very beneficial. And they are listening to us. Uh, I've always complained about the state not really listening, making a one-way street, here's what you do. With the park, they did listen. And in the first year we had two sessions, now they've reduced it to one session. Uh, we complained about the amount of time, they've reduced the amount of time. So as long as they listen to us, as long as they give us time to adjust our teaching, I th and they are by not making a requirement until 2021, I think we will be in great shape. And our kids are doing extraordinarily well. Uh, when you first look at the results, uh, it, you have to interpret them because they're not as cut and dried as they have been in the past. Uh, for example, when you look at the eighth grade uh, math scores in Park, they may seem low. But when you realize that all of the high achieving students who took Algebra one are not included in that group, it kind of explains why they're not as high as you might have expected them to be. Right. So there are some little things like that that we have to uh, explain to people. But overall, uh, I think the state is listening and I hope they continue and, and to make adjustments and to provide us with resources so we can train our teachers to do what they need to do. Well, I want to get to the one that I, you know, shared service agreement that we have with the school board. Um, I got to tell you, when um, the former superintendent left, I was concerned because I didn't have an opportunity to really discuss it with you or uh, the program. And ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, I belong to uh, the Morris County Coalition for a Better Choice, um, and it's an anti-drug and anti-alcohol um, program in the county. Out of the 39 towns right now, I think there's eight towns, and Parsippany is one of them. And there's a gentleman named Ace Gallagher, who's a committee man in, in, in Hanover, who's a former Board of Education member. When I told him what we did in Parsippany, he was just elated. He says, how did you guys do that? Because, you know, he's, I said, and I said, well, we got the right guy in <laughs> at the time. And, but I have to tell you, I have to ask you, because it's an important question, how's it going so far? Well, first of all, let me tell you, this is a wonderful partnership that you've created with the township and the school district. I mean, it's just spectacular because at the end of the day, our highest priority is the safety of our staff and students. Right. So you've got to be commended for that. As far as it working, uh, it's working quite well. We are having you know, more security in our schools. But I think the thing that really is going to set this apart is we have trained professionals in the field of safety and security working with us to identify areas where we can improve the safety in our schools. And right now, uh, Brian Dowd, our officer, is working through all of our crisis plans. He's inspecting all the schools. He's uh, putting together checklists so that the SROs uh, do certain things every day or every week or every month. So we have constant monitoring of the systems. He's looking at our uh, uh, cameras, uh, security cameras, to make sure that they're where they should be. Uh, we're making sure that the police department has appropriate access to our cameras when there's a, a crisis or an emergency. So it's only been in place for three weeks of the new school year, but I can tell you we're all very pleased. And I know the principals and the teachers are really grateful because now we have someone who's trained working with us when we do our drills. Right. And, and you know, hopefully we never have to have a real emergency, but knowing that we have our people trained that the drills work is very comforting. And you know and I know if the teachers and the students don't feel safe, nothing's going to happen. So I think it's just a, a wonderful uh, agreement, partnership, and uh, I just hope we can get to spread around the country and around the state because it is a great model for other districts to uh, emulate. Uh, and I think, because um, uh, we had a meeting of the coalition, and I, I told them that it's not just having the resource officers. They're like, they get along well with the students. The students look forward to seeing them. But the other element of it is that um, we have the anti-bullying um, program that, um, thanks to you, we're going to have into the, uh, in, in October in the elementary schools. We mm -hmm. have a, a girl that went to the um, Pacific Hills High School, um, Ashley Tobias, who has a, a theme, Be True to You, who teaches the classes of, of anti-bullying. But we have the anti-drug program, which we're, start, we're going to st come to you eventually to implement that uh, by having assemblies in the middle schools, mm -hmm. and an anti-human um, trafficking, because 
Uh, human trafficking has become a uh, like the seventh, one of the largest and fastest organized crimes uh, developing in the, in the nation, and Jersey's ranked number seven in the nation mm -hmm. for that. So we want to get that into the schools because it starts with education, of course. But the fact is that I get to boast, but I have to thank you yeah. because it, it doesn't happen, and I didn't think it was going to happen, and, and it doesn't happen unless you have the right individuals at the right time in the right place. And the nice thing is you came back, we had nine members on, on the Board of Education who agreed, and out of the five council, we had four who agreed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to thank you, Dr. Seitz, because... Um, um, for putting uh, our, our kids as priority one. That, that's well, important. thank you very much. And I, I do have to emphasize that the point you just made. I, I was talking about, you know, the security systems we have and, and the practices we do. But the real value is that because we have trained professionals in the schools, they are proactively working with our students. And they're getting to issues before they become problems. So we may not see that, and people may not hear about it, but I think one of the most positive aspects of this whole partnership is that our police department is developing a relationship with our staff and students. So a child, a student feels comfortable going to one of the officers with a problem. And that probably didn't occur in the past, so the problem went unattended, and all of a sudden it blew up. Right now we have this proactive approach, and again, you've selected wonderful officers, they have great rapport with our students, and they become a part of our school community. And once that happens, it's almost like a family, and things get resolved very quickly. So you have to be commended for doing it, but also for selecting really good people, really appropriate people, uh, who can work with our students and staff. So I thank you on behalf of our students. And I would be disingenuous if I didn't say our council president, uh, Lou Valoria, who was a former police officer in town and a former Board of Education member, mm -hmm. he, he got it. He understood because he was a D.A.R.E. officer, so he knew. So that helps out a lot as well because, you, you have you know, you, once you have the council president and the mayor agreeing, it's a lot easier to bring it forward. Well, you're absolutely right. And he was, you know, a, a strong leader on the board when I was here before. He values education. He certainly values life and, and the uh, lives of children. Uh, he's been uh, indirectly affected by some of the tragedies that occur occurred across the country. Right. So That's he Virginia. understands firsthand how important this is. And, and you're absolutely right. It takes, you know, people work together. And uh, uh, Mr. Valori was a wonderful asset uh, and partner with you to make this happen. Thank you. Well, let's talk about the, the, the strategic planning initiative because I okay. was interviewed in... Uh, I couldn't, I got to tell you, when I was interviewed, and I forget her name, and I feel horrible. Uh, Judith Wilson. Yeah, Judith Wilson. I told her, you know, we talked about the SRO program, but I told her what I, you know, I thought about the school system here in Parsippany. I grew up here. I went through the school system. My wife went through the school system, my daughter, my son. And I have to tell you, I had the most wonderful experience in, in the school system. Parsippany Hills had great teachers and mentors, and it went on and on. But... I did tell her one of the things that, as a mayor, one of my you know initiatives, and, and it's working, is the safety in our school system mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Academically, I got to tell you, we don't get ranked fifth place to live in the United States of America by accident. We have a great school system. You do, and and your two high schools are ranked in the top 100 on a consistent basis. But let me go back a little bit because uh, before I talk about strategic planning, you know this is a wonderful community and it has a history of uh, strong schools. Uh, it's interesting, this year, the high is celebrating its 60th anniversary, and Troy Hills Elementary is uh, celebrating its 50th anniversary, and I guess we're gonna be yep. over there on Friday. So you have this wonderful history, and you have a very powerful, successful school district, and it's easy to become complacent. And what strategic planning will do, it'll help us talk to all the people who are affected by our schools, and come up with three to five broad, broad goals that we can work on for the next three to five years. Uh, we can't rest. We can't say, well, you know, for the last three years, the academic decathlon team at the high has been number one in the state. And that's great, and it's probably unprecedented. But we don't want to stop there. Right. Uh, and strategic planning will help us identify these areas where we can continue to improve. 
and continue to do the things that we do well. I just hope that our uh, viewers, members of the community, participate in the online surveys and participate on the uh, forum, the public forum that is uh, scheduled in October. And we will be getting announcements out to the public about that. But the more feedback uh, Mrs. Wilson gets in this process, the better the outcome will be for the board. And the best thing is this will be uh, completed by December of this year. So we're going to have a plan for the new superintendent to follow when he or she gets here. Now, are other towns doing this or just participating right now? Uh, we're doing it right now. Uh, other districts do it from time to time. But again, when you have a good school district, you don't necessarily have the, the need. People don't see the need for it. Uh, I think it's just the opposite. Uh, when you have a successful school district, you tend to keep things going in the same direction, thinking it'll last forever. But as you know, as, as the mayor, you've seen this town change dramatically over the last 10 years. Right. And we've got to keep adjusting the township and the schools to match the needs of our students, and you, in your case, the needs of the community. So it's important. I think uh, next to hiring a new superintendent, this will be the most important thing that the Board of Education does this school year. Well, with things change so quickly, uh, so say five years down the line, will this um, how would this affect things planning-wise? Well, I don't know what the outcome will be. I mean, I, I, have a, I think I have a good idea of what it's going to be, but we want to try to identify, and we don't do this enough in public education, we need to take time to reflect on what we're doing now, but also what do we think our kids are going to need five years from now and ten years from now. And uh, we just don't have the time. This forces us to take the time. Right. Uh, so will we see anything different? No, the schools will be here. Uh, they'll be staffed with teachers. I'm anticipating you'll see uh, maybe uh, more uh, varied programs. I think you're going to see uh, better technology. Uh, so I think those things will evolve, but this will give us a, a more focused approach as opposed to piecemeal. And I think that's what the key is. We have limited resources, so we've got to make sure that whatever money we spend we get the most bang from. So this will help us in that, in that uh, aspect. I'll tell you this though, one thing I will say about Parsippany and the school system and being a mayor, we are so diverse. And um, it's so funny, um, Professor Curry, I think that's his name, his son was, uh, his children went to the Parsippany High School uh -huh. system, Parsippany High, and we were at um, a meeting together and we were talking and we were talking about the school system it was a human relations committee, and he said that his children went to other states for school, lived in other towns, but they 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 never seen anything like Parsippany ever where they go. Um, how everybody got along, different ethnic groups got along in the high schools, and the, and that's what makes Parsippany great, and that's what makes the Parsippany school system great. I and, and you know, I have to tell you, Dr. Seitz. Um, I got nervous because when you left, I got to know you. I got to work with you. Other superintendents came in. I didn't get, you know, like I said to you before, I got nervous, you know, like how is this school district going to move forward? You came back, and it was like bang. So I hope the next superintendent of the schools that they do get um, is a reflection of you. Well, we're going to be working on the next superintendent. And, you know, the thing I have to say, uh, because I don't take credit for the district, uh, I take credit for maybe creating some conditions uh, where people can excel. But when I got here in December uh, of last year and went through the district and started getting a sense of what was going on, 95 to 98 percent of everything was great. You know, you went to the classrooms because we didn't change the teachers, we didn't change the program, we didn't change the administrators. Great learning was going on. And this district ran uh, very smoothly at that level. At a different level there were some problems obviously, but you have to really credit the teachers and administrators and parents and students in this community for continuing their excellence while there was ongoing distractions. Uh, yes, the scheduling at the middle schools was a major mistake, granted, but once they straightened it out, come October, what was going on? Great classroom instruction, Yep. Students were learning, and that's because you have wonderful people, whether they're citizens of the town or teachers or administrators or support staff in the school district. They are wonderful. They celebrate diversity, and 
I think they use that diversity as an advantage. And, and, and again, when you look at this school district and its diversity, uh, it is really unbelievable, but it's wonderful. Right. You know, and I, I haven't seen that in too many other districts. I'll say this, my wife's a teacher. And I get to, it doesn't end at three o'clock or three thirty. Yeah. I watch how hard uh, she works and how she's, you know, she gets emotional for her students. She loves her students, and we have that here in Parsippany mm -hmm. as well. So, Dr. Seitz, I want to thank you for being on the show. My pleasure. And um, once again, well, um, thank you for tuning in to Pride in Parsippany. And until next time, God bless you all. Thank you very much.